Oh, I just don't have enough screen space, guys. Damn. Here I've got 4chan, I've got Imager, I've got Reddit, I've got Twitter, and I've got no more room for my Facebook. So what am I going to do? We need another monitor. Well, guys, as you know, I don't have enough monitors. All I've got is three measly 46-inch monitors, and I needed more real estate. So I picked up this little guy by AOC. It's a portable USB monitor that's uh, plug-and-play LED, and it's completely powered over USB. So both the screen, the video, and the data all goes over USB, so you don't have a bunch of cables. Um, I kind of wanted this to be able to throw in my backpack and lug around with my laptop, but I also want to try using it with the big computer here, too, just by plugging it into the hub on my keyboard. And I want to see if I can use it for just, like, showing a web page or playing a video on YouTube or something while I'm in a game. So let's go ahead and uh, open this thing up and see if it uh, works decent. I picked it up from, I think it was Newegg, and it was like, I think it was only like 70 bucks or something. It was really cheap. It actually wasn't that expensive at all. Um, and being USB, obviously, it's not going to be as good as going HDMI or something like that, but I figured for the cost, it'd be worth a try. Let's go ahead and pull this out. Looks like we just got a piece of foam. We'll just chuck that. Uh, here's the USB cable that it came with. And the screen itself, which is actually really lightweight, surprisingly. Uh, got a little bit of documentation and another piece of foam. So that's it for the box. So let's take a look at what we got here, guys. Um, looks like it came with some software. I'm sure it will need some software to work because it is a USB device. So we have right here, it says the user guide and the monitor driver. Looks like we have a diagram. Right here it shows how to adjust the tilt angle on it and how to plug it into your laptop. I think we got it covered by now. All right, let's go ahead and open this thing up. Take it out of its protective... Oh, it's even got a hole? Oh, here we go on the top. All right. Go ahead and pull it up, and there you have it. It's uh, it's actually incredibly lightweight. It weighs probably less than my digital picture frame. I don't know if you can tell how much it weighs, weighs by me just throwing it in the air, but it's, it's pretty light. It's deceivingly light. So let's go ahead and take off all this crap. We don't need none of this stinking cellophane. Cellophane's for noobs. All right, chuck that aside. We don't need this little sticker up at the bottom. USB monitor, LED backlit, USB, glare panel, auto pivot. Oh, so it has auto pivoting, so if you turn it on its side, it'll automatically adjust the orientation of the display. Flexi stand, HG free, Energy Star compliant. Well, it better be only consuming five volts. Um, so let's go ahead and chuck all this crap out of the way. That's pretty cool. Let's take this giant chunk of plastic. Man, they really wrapped the hell out of this thing. Jeez. Out of control. Out of control, guys. Okay, so the leg folds out. It's really, really stiff. So I don't think we'll have problems with it slipping. Jesus, how much cellophane can you put on this damn thing? There's cellophane in places where I can't even get to it. Oh well, whatever. It is what it is. So, looks like this thing folds out and twists, so you can do dual orientation, so you can set it up just like that. Again, it's, it's I mean, it's super, super lightweight. Almost too, too lightweight, <laughs> if that can be a thing. Oh, and these little rubber things on the side, I think those are the feet. So if you want to turn it in portrait orientation, you flip that thing down, and there you have it. So, that's kind of cool, actually. And it's not as thin as I was hoping. I was hoping it'd be a little bit more portable in the laptop because, I mean, it's pretty thick. I'd say it's probably two two inches or so thick. Um, they just round it to make it seem like it's thinner than it is. But anyways, let's plug it in and see if it works. So let's go ahead and take the little USB cable. Um, they obviously think that you're going to just plug it into a laptop. And the reason why I say that is the cable actually looks pretty short. I mean, it's a three-foot cable. And it looks like it plugs into two USB ports. So that's another little deceiving thing here. Is it said on it that it's, oh, it's powered right over the USB cable. Well, yeah, but it takes two USB ports because it's got to pull voltage from both of them. And that might be a problem with some things. So that's, I don't know, that's, that's kind of a little bit of bullshit advertisement. I mean, they made it sound like you just plug in one USB cable and you're good to go. Now you need to plug in two USB cables. So let's see, where do we plug this thing in at? 
Oh, right here. This little USB port right down here. Okay. Well, let's start off by just trying to plug in one and see what it does. Okay, I'm not seeing anything. I don't hear any beep boop beeps. So let's plug in the second one. Okay, I've got it plugged into two USBs. Um, and nothing is happening. Is there a power button on here I am unaware of? No. Okay, so that stinks. Nothing is happening, guys. So, I think, sorry, I'm clicking quick time shit. Um, well, oh, I heard, heard some beep, boop, beep. Maybe I just wasn't patient enough. Oh, there we go. Now I hear USB sounds. The computer says, please wait while setup installs the necessary files. So let's see if it just figures it out on its own. All right, well, it looks like it popped up on the screen and it wants the display link software. So I haven't put a CD in yet. This is just Windows 8, so I'm gonna say, okay, I accept. It says software has been successfully installed. Now, just, now it's doing some display link configuration and QuickTime's bugging me, okay. Shit's flickering, that's good. Well, I'll be damned, the thing works. It uh, it pops up, it says new display found, E1649FWU, click this icon to control the new display. And the new display shows up. So I can put it down below the second display. Let's try uh, putting something on it here. Here, we'll move the control panel down there. Oh, here, I gotta apply it first, hold on. Okay. Oh, look at that. Wow, surprisingly, it doesn't seem like there's any lag. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Let me check. Uh... Okay, no, you can see it. So this is now configured as the bottom screen. And you can see here, I can drag this down, move it around super fast, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. I mean, I'm moving really quick so you can see if there's any lag. And I don't see any perceivable lag. That's actually pretty damn impressive, guys. Um, so I can full screen that there. So let's open up uh, Internet Exploder. We'll stick that down there. You can see it's a, you know it's not super smooth when you're scrolling stuff around. The more the more stuff that's on the screen, obviously the slower it goes. Uh, but it does it does look like it's doing the job. That's pretty impressive. And right now, I got this just plugged into my keyboard, guys. It's just plugged into the two ports on my keyboard, which is ironic because my keyboard only has one USB coming out of it going into the computer. So I'm basically plugging in both cables, and I might not even need them. Here, let me try unplugging one of the cables. Nope, it needs them. Okay, plug it back in. Let's see if it just pops right back. Sure enough, windows get a little screwed up. Put that back down there. Well, damn, that's actually pretty awesome, guys. Uh, so far, I'm kind of speechless. I didn't think this thing was going to be so easy to just plug in and use. I mean, it doesn't need another video card. This is a cool solution. I mean, I'm curious to see if it looks... The, the color on the screen looks good. The viewing angle is actually pretty good. Uh, let's try to flip it on its side. They claim it can figure out its own orientation, but... I'm guessing that's only if you have it configured, because right now you can see I flipped it on its side and it did not figure out the new orientation. Uh, but it said it is Mac compliant, so if I connected it up to the Mac MacBook, that might work. Well, here, let's see if uh, let's see if a YouTube video will play. See what it looks like. Prepare for nerdgasm. All right, so here's one of my room Hello, tour videos. Fans, Jerry here, aka Barnacles. Got a little video for you guys. It's been a couple of days. I apologize for that. We'll set it to, to 1080p. The man cave is completely destroyed, so I can control the lighting and I can control the position of the camera. So now I'm hoping that I can get a lot better quality videos moving forward. So now you guys can get a close look at the screen. Sorry for the buffering. I don't have a lot of internet bandwidth, as you guys well know, and I'm trying to do this in 1080p. Um, but I can tell you, looking at it, 
it looks pretty damn good. I mean, the resolution isn't super high on it. Let me see, what was the resolution? I learned half the shit while I'm doing the unboxing, you guys. Kind of complained about, you know, lighting and audio we'll and things like that. So hopefully this is the first video in the step of many better videos. Yeah, it's only 1366 by 768. I actually consolidated all my computers into one corner of the room. So now I have an L-shaped desk and I have my server, my workstation. But and it still I looks really good. Computer all interconnected right here. And I'll turn that down a little bit. But I mean, for playing a YouTube video, that looks pretty good. So while that's going on, let me try opening up some a game. Here, I'll open up uh, Black Ops. The floor plan now I have a bunch oh, it looks like it screwed up the full screen video. Let's come down and see if that can be... Let me alt tab out. Yeah, I didn't like that on full screen for sure. Let's try just zooming in. There's a little tech tip for you guys. If you hold control while you're scrolling, it'll zoom in and out in the web browser in most Windows programs. So let's try that again. Let's go open this up. Okay, that works a little better. So yeah, I got a game, a game running up on the top screen, and this is still working. So this might actually be a really good option to add another monitor to your screen. I mean, it's not going to be good for gaming. But I think it would be a great little monitor for just displaying data on showing web pages, checking your email and stuff like that. And it appears to work just like it has its own video card, which is actually pretty damn amazing. Especially considering the price is only, I think, 70 or 80 bucks for this. Um, and uh, looking at it, the screen, the screen seems decent. It's lightweight. Uh, definitely if you push on the screen, you can see a little bit of flicker and stuff. So it's not like armor plated. Uh, Judging by how much it weighs, I don't know. I can't really speak to the durability. I'll have to use it for a while. But uh, it definitely gets the job done. And hell, it's truly plug and play. How many devices like this can you just plug in and the damn thing just works? I mean, it showed up in Display Manager, ready to go. You guys can see now, I actually have Black Ops open on the above screen. Searching for an online match right now. A bunch of you guys are probably going to try to join me. It's funny, every time I do testing with a game and I opened up, like everybody tries to join on me, and it's pretty funny. So, to kind of give you an idea of like the screen color and quality, we can kind of put these side by side. This is the Microsoft Surface RT and the AOC. I mean, we're not comparing them for like tablets, obviously, they're not both tablets. This, is, this one isn't touch screen. But uh, it doesn't seem to affect the performance too adversely. Oh, nice. I used my uh, my Razer, or not my Razer, what the hell is that thing called? The NVIDIA Shield earlier to play uh, games, streaming games over the network. And the thumbstick screwed up my mouse. Now my mouse is like inverted because it, it changed the configuration Steam did to play on a controller. Oh, that's going to get annoying. All right, anyways. Getting off topic here, guys. <laughs> so, uh, actually, pretty badass little screen, guys. Um, I mean, there's not a lot more to do with it as far as an unboxing is concerned. Uh, let's hook it up to the MacBook and see if it works. All right, so here we have my MacBook Pro 17 Core i7. Let's go ahead and open this up. Man, this thing's filthy. So... There we go, just sitting on the desktop. Let's go ahead and unplug this from the PC. And it looks like the display mode instantly went back to my normal three monitor configuration. That's nice. And uh, it does use up two USB ports. So let's go ahead and plug that in. Okay, they're both plugged in. Now I'm not gonna touch anything, I just wanna see what happens. So far, I'm not seeing much happening. Windows 8 just picked it up immediately. Okay, so nothing's happening automatically. So I'm thinking on OS X, we probably have to do the install CD. Let's go ahead and open it up. I can't even remember the last time I used a CD drive. All right, CD is loaded. Now, I'm thinking if I installed the software off the CD on Windows 8, it would probably give me more functionality than the inbox driver. So now it says we have to restart. So now I'm betting that the tilt functionality on it will actually work. And the thing ab is an absolute finger magnet. I can tell you right now, just from the couple times I touched the screen, it's, it's really, really oily. All right, we're booted back up, sitting at the login screen, and I can already see the background over there. Um, it thinks it's on this side, though, so i got to change the orientation. 
but it does appear to be working. So let's go ahead and log in. And the cup, I mean, the color looks good. The monitor, it's got a little bit of a tight viewing angle. It gets really dim if you look at it off to the side, but if you look at it straight on, it's actually got really, really good color. Um, again, though, I mean, it's really inexpensive. So let's go ahead and move this over here. You can see it doesn't scroll as smooth as on the main screen. It is a little bit choppy. We can go check out Jay's Two Cents Nexus 7 review. He's a cool guy. Oh, it looks like the screen it froze, but then it came back. Let's go ahead and kick it up to 720p. It does seem a little bit choppy. It was definitely a lot smoother. Yeah, it's it's not that smooth under OS X. It was it was like liquid smooth frame rate playing a YouTube video um, under Windows, but under OS X, you can see it's hitching and it's kind of well that now it's buffering. But you saw it's 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 hung up a couple times. It doesn't look as good. The frame rate's not as smooth. So obviously the drivers for OS X aren't anywhere near as good as the drivers are for Windows. Um, just, just from our observations we made during this video, I'm sure there's other things that factor into it. But let's see if the tilt functionality works because it didn't work in Windows. So if I flip this on its side, let's see if it's smart enough to figure out the new orientation. Hmm. Not looking so good, guys. Let's go into System Preferences. Let's go to Displays. I can change the arrangement, but it doesn't look like I can change the orientation in OS X. It only allows me this one orientation. So just from this little demo, I mean, it obviously works, but it doesn't work as good as Windows. So if you're buying this for a Mac extra screen, it does work, but just realize even just with the YouTube test in Chrome, the frame rate's not nearly as smooth as it was in Windows. And both, but in that, and they're both going over USB 2.0. So hopefully you guys can see this in the video, but let me go ahead and rewind it while it's buffering. You can see how smooth it is on that screen, right? So now let's go ahead and hit escape. We're going to drag it over to the other display. Oh, damn it. How do I unfull screen it? Guys, I'm such a noob at this. There we go. All right, move over. Over there. Okay, come on. Full screen. I want to see Jay in all of his glory. Yeah, you can see see how I full screened it, and it looks like the frame rate now is about maybe 12 or 15 frames per second. I'll rewind it again. It's buffering. Hmm. On OS X, it looks like it does genuinely struggle a lot more than it did when I was working on my PC. So just to do an apples to apples comparison, because these obviously are two different systems, let's go ahead and boot my laptop into Windows 7 and see how it looks. Oh, we're seeing something on the other screen. Yay! And there it is, guys. Now we've got the screen working on Windows 7. Now that we installed the driver, let's see if it does the auto tilt. Oh, it looks like it's trying. Yeah, look at that. Auto tilt works in Windows 7 when you install the drivers. So if that's something you want to be able to do, quickly just flip that sucker up. And have your have your notes and stuff displayed. Whoa. And maybe like turn the arm around the right way. There we go. Now you got a nice place to put your documents. That's actually pretty cool. I have a feeling I'm gonna use this a lot with my laptop. Let's just go to uh, YouTube. Go check out my channel. Pull up my missile trolling video.
Okay, let's turn it on its side while it's playing. It does take a while to transition when you do that. Yeah, I know how to, I, I know how to get them, guys. Oh, it got it all screwed up and confused. Here. There we go. Let's go full screen again. Yeah, you like that? So it's still a lot smoother than it was in OS X, but it's not as smooth as it was on Windows 8. I think I think Windows 8, they must have done something that really refined the performance on this thing. Although it might have something to do with my main computer being a shitload more powerful, but I think the USB 2.0 has more to do with it than the driver itself. But there you guys have it. I mean, there's not really much more to say. It works. It worked on Windows 7, it worked on OS X, and uh, it even worked on Windows 8. So this is actually a pretty cool little gadget to have if you want another screen on the go. Well, guys, if it's too good to be true, it usually is. There are some major pitfalls to the screen. After playing with it for a little while, after dinner, I found out, one, it doesn't work with SLI at all. If you enable SLI, like if you don't just do three independent screens with your two graphics cards, and you enable SLI, it just straight up doesn't work. It Like, one screen will turn on, and it won't even recognize the other screens. So, this does not work with SLI. I also went and confirmed this looking in Display Link's forums, that they have all kinds of problems with SLI. Now, they claim it works fine with ATI Crossfire. Somebody else have to try that out, though, because I don't have an ATI card to do it with. Um, so I'm a little bit bummed about that because, you know, obviously with this huge setup here, I do mostly surround gaming. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to use this. So I'm going to keep my eye out for another 15 inch for this application. So this is going to be strictly used with my laptop, that MacBook Pro that you saw. And for that application, it works absolutely beautifully, as you guys saw in the video. But as far as playing games, the only thing you can do is if you have a single GPU, if you're just driving your three monitors off your 680 GTX or better, um, this will work just fine. But if you are running an SLI and you are using NVIDIA Surround, not gonna happen man which sucks completely pisses me off so you guys could tell from the video how enthused i was about all this and now i go find this out and do the research and it's like oh, i just want to tear my hair out but um it is cool i'm definitely going to be looking for another small monitor that i can actually connect into the video card so that i can just run it direct off the video card with hdmi but because i'm addicted already i mean just the fact that i can sit here and i got my big screens then i got this little screen right in front of me this is just this is killer i can't get over how awesome this is so i definitely want it but the search will have to continue so anyways guys i hope this video gave you a nerdgasm it's a little bit of a bummer at the end i know it was like a whole lot of build up and then punched in the nuts at the end but uh sometimes that's how it goes with these product reviews but if you got a laptop and you want another screen that's you know small compact folds together oh it looks like it already unplugged you know goes together and sticks in your laptop bag not a bad way to go seriously the weight's not bad um the footprint's not horrible it's a little bit thick uh probably thicker than most laptops but uh it's it's not bad for that application but it just doesn't work with sli and god that's just a deal breaker for me all right guys till next time I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.